one we made a plan we're trying to get to here mm -hmm. ah, i don't really like how it's going it's not really serving us let's maybe try to get there to kind of free up some of you and yes. see if we'll be happy like that yes you just got to have the conversation but if you, you just sitting back watching them run i feel ragged. like people had those conversations i just don't think you have them in my opinion you have them correctly uh, it's how you communicate. It's exactly. It's how you say that. If you're saying, man, my husband's working a lot, right? I feel like a lot of women will frame it like this. Husband, why are you working so much? You're like, you're, you're never home. You never do this. You're never here for this. Like, if you approach that immediate conversation and you're, you're like, here's all the things that you're doing wrong, most people are going to kind of tune you out mm -hmm. because you're already coming at me with the, with the accusations and, and, whether or not they're negative, it just could be just you are feeling hurt. Whereas if you present the same conversation, say, husband, I know you've been working hard to provide for us, but I'm missing you being at home. I'm missing the time that we spend together. I can immediately see, oh, like you're missing who I am as a person. Like a lot of people go with like the negative of how you feel about it instead of like, here's why in like a, a positive but negative set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're acknowledging the fact that I, I know at least the root, root cause of why you're working hard. Right. Or I know the root cause of why you go out and hang out. Like you hang out because you go to work all the time. Like sometimes you have to show a little bit of empathy. Like I understand how you got here or I understand how you ended up possibly arriving at this spot. But let me show you how it's affecting me or affecting the kids or affecting us as a unit. Whether it's something as big as, oh, I feel like, you know, you never hear from me. Mm -hmm. Or even as something small, it's like, you know, I just miss like our Saturday mornings when we used to get up and go to breakfast. Well, and that's also why I, I went back to saying you have to get back to that drawing board and redefine what you're doing it for. Yeah. Because, like, take the example of going to work, right? Mm -hmm. You're working for the something, right? Yes. The something could be just basically, yo, the mortgage that we already have. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We can't come back to the drawing board and be like, babe, you're working too much. Uh, you need we, a roof we, the bill still exists. <laughs> exactly. So what can I do? So if we don't also have that conversation of, you know, empathizing with the situation. Mm -hmm. But then also, how do we fix it? Right. Because don't yes. just talk to somebody about something that can't be fixed. Like, ma'am, that's my 40-hour shift. Like, there's not, Or I bought this home based off of some overtime I put in. I must put in that overtime. That's what, what do I you have mean? to do. Exactly. Yeah, so I instead to. of you coming then and saying, hey, you know, I'm missing you, you make quality time of the time that you guys have together. But yeah. absolutely, you have to empathize. You have to come to communicate what you want and come to the table to get what you actually want from it. Exactly. You right. just can't be just complaining because you're right. As a as a male, as a man, if I know I'm out there busting my ass to to do what I need to do, and you tell me you working too hard, I don't know why you're working too hard, and blah, blah blah. And I'm thinking you ain't doing but so much. Ain't like you said, okay, but I'm gonna pick up a part time job. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have first. We're gonna discuss it. Like it's gonna affect the kids. It's gonna affect some things. You know, how can we you know alleviate some of the stress on you? Then okay, let's have that conversation. And do what we need to do, but you yeah. can't tell me you know you work too hard, but you're not gonna do any any differently to make my job easier. Yep. Well, why are we have this are conversation? What we talking about? What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Because if I do cut back, now something's gonna suffer. Because right, Bill ain't get paid in full. K ain't getting paid. Yeah, you couldn't go out shopping. Nope. The way you wanted to. Gas you know, is, is high. I had to cut off my little cable. Extra add on. No, everybody's uncomfortable. You didn't come up with a solution. You just uncomfortable. Yes. And again, that uncomfortable thing is the could possibly just be the growth. Is the growth. And again, you have to understand. And, and, and the thing is, when you're young, when you get married and you have a relationship young or get married young, there's just some things you're just going to learn you know, along the way. I think now, the young the young part of the marriage is the part of the marriage where all the pressure gets put on. All of the pressure right? because you really don't know. You 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 stand there and you sing, you know, oh my God, for the rest of my life. You hope. Well more than that, like the pressures of life, right? Oh yeah. Your your job training, 
right? Yep. Or you're cross training to get to another job, or you're up, you know, up, up level training, right? Trying mm-hmm. to get another skill so you can move up the ladder. Yes. Right. So you're not only working your forty hours, but then you're trying to get in a few couple hours of an extra class so you can you know, do better. Yes. So that's a strain on the relationship, Mm -hmm. right? The wife is probably doing the same thing. Today's woman is probably in the career world Mm -hmm. doing the same exact thing. Another strain, more pressure on the relationship, Mm -hmm. right? It's not just me and you now. It's me, you, and the world now, Mm -hmm. right? And now we have to figure out us alongside of figuring out ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? And constantly. then you, yeah, constantly. Mm-hmm. And then you add in um, cars, yes, car insurance, <sighs> bills. You know, because then you start adding on the bills, yes. right? The bills that you've never really been familiar with, the fees that you've never really seen before. So now you're getting familiar with tickets and yes. you know MVA fees, car insurance. You know, you're start you're starting to adult now, right? Yes. And it's starting to get real and. These are the pressures. Yes. Then you throw a kid or two in the spot, oh, right? Yes. Now you got to figure out drop-offs, pickups, pay the bills, keep the lights on, go to work, move up the ladder, look like something, get your nails done, take care of your man, massage his head. God damn, it's got scratch <laughs> my head. Just thinking about all the stuff to go down. When the pressure is on. That's true. Right? Yep. Because in the beginning part of the relationships, the strain is present. Yes, And it is. it's like you have to get over that hump also, right? Mm-hmm. In order to get to a little bit of a coast. Yes. Right? Where yes. the kids are like out adulting and they're fighting the world and you can just kind of watch them fight and watch them in it and they want to listen to you. Uh, <laughs> like, ah, oh, you're going to sit on your, you know, you're going to mm-hmm. fall on your ass because you didn't mm-hmm. want to listen to me. But that's you fault because I already failed. Yes. I already did my Many times. Right? Many a times over. And, um, but you realize that as you grow older, the pressures, they start to lift just Mm -hmm. a little bit, right? Even just think about having a kid who's in daycare versus Mm. having no children in daycare. Oh, right. That costs associated with that nowadays. Or or the fact that they can all wipe their own asses now, right? (laughs) I don't got to change. Nobody is that. Like life is, that is a total different pressure that's now relieved off of the household. Some Very people true. don't even realize it, right? That you don't have a baby crying in your background. You don't uh, have to worry about diapers and wipes and packing uh, that diaper bag and all these excessive it onesies. It goes along with it. Yeah. I remember I- shouting out them damn onesies, getting on my f- trigger finger all messed up, one not for them uh, onesies having to be shouted out. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother pressure. I don't do laundry the same way I have to do baby laundry. No. So it's the pressures and the strains. Yes. That can get put on the relationship. That is they so change true. as the relationship evolves. Yes, and along the way, you also have to communicate mm-hmm. because what happens is if you the pressures are going to be there, but if along the way these things are happening, but in your head you have different thoughts. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't realize it's going to be this hard, but mm-hmm. you keep it to yourself, and then you start looking at the other person. Well, they should be doing this, mm-hmm. or they should be doing that, but you never voice it. You don't say anything. So you done did the pick up and the drop off for the babies and cook the dinner mm-hmm. and mow the lawn mm-hmm. and took out the trash. Mm-hmm. And the man sitting there playing his video game. He thinking, damn, this life is sweet. <laughs> she yep. did that? She even <laughs> mowed the lawn? Wow. <laughs> and and he's just chilling. And then you stressed, depressed, got bags under your eyes and you're looking crazy and you Bought up in the corner crying, and he like, "What's wrong?" And then you tell him, he's like, "Well, damn, why, why, why was you doing all that? You didn't, why didn't you say nothing?" <laughs> he's dumbfounded. Yeah, because if it's getting done, we're not gonna say anything. Like, oh, it's getting done. Now, if you say, "Listen, you, I need you to do blah blah whatever," yeah. okay, I got you. I got you. I did it. It's Simple done. As that. Simple as that. Come, you never communicated. You just took on the whole world. Yep. And because you can do it, you decided to do it. And, and, got- <laughs> and being Superwoman, I haven't seen anyone's tombstones that said, here lies Superwoman. She did everything, and she's now here. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> no, no, you'll never get that on your mm -mm. on your tombstone. Mm -mm. She did that. She no. did all that, mm -mm. but she's still here dead yeah. because she did everything. She did too much. So again, you have to understand you're all going to grow differently. We're mm -hmm. all going to be able to, go, and then we all got our, our strengths and weaknesses. If you know your husband ain't good with money, do you, the from the beginning, yeah, you need to handle them. Oh, yeah, put your money in the bank, and and that's the other thing. When it comes to finances, you got to be clear on that because a lot of people I've heard over the years, like well, you know, why she has her account, I have my account, and then and, I, and and then we have our account. Whatever works for your home works for your home. If that means you put everything in one account, then everything goes in the account, or you put a, a account where you handle all the major bills and you have your little side money. And he has his little side money. It's cool, but if you know he's a guy kind of guy, if he had extra money in his hand, he gonna burn on something stupid. Make sure he put more in that in that joint account than he has in his pocket. Because now you know, since you're handling the money, I know it's going to stay in here. Mm -hmm. I can move that to savings. I can move that somewhere else. So that's rainy day money. Yeah. In case something happens, I know there's, oh, baby, damn, the, the engine went up. And you don't have insurance. Normally, you don't have when, warranty. when you talk to people, they'll tell you their flaws. Right? Yeah. They they're do. just kind of... Yeah, like me, I'll tell I'll tell you straight up, like, no, nah, I'm generally late for stuff, right? Mm hmm So normally my mate would absolutely lie to me, to my face, to make sure that we're on time and stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was like, we don't be mad. Ass at three, but we got to be there. I'll tell her at two. Yeah, like, come on, let's just keep it real. There's some things that you kind of, soft things that you build inside the relationship to make sure, you know, you guys both thriving. Because if you're a stickler for time, then my tardiness, oh, man, you're going to be acting like Daffy Duck. Yes. Hey, man, man. Like, you're going to be sitting there like, <laughs> what's wrong? Coming through like Daisy Duck or regular, switching like, what's wrong? <laughs> you're like, God damn, you late again? What do you mean? You're like, Yo, always a Donald, Donald Duck. Donald yeah, Duck. you'll be acting like Donald Duck, quacking your little soft man, man. And here I am, switching, acting like, like, what's wrong? And you know, but he knows. And he knows. So, okay, I have to adjust accordingly. Mm -hmm. So I make sure you're there on time. So I know you that way. And that's cool. Like I said, mm -hmm. if, if somebody's bad with money, you know. And, and money's a touchy situation because a lot of people know they're bad with money, but don't want nobody to tell them they're bad with money. Especially their mate. They're like, oh, well. Don't I, pay any, don't I put enough money in for the bills? That's not the point. I know you're going to waste money. I know, like I said, rainy day. Mm -hmm. I need to pull some extra money from you. So you may, not, you may need to approach him differently rather than say, put all your money in that account. Yeah. Because if you say that, well, well I'm a kid. I, yeah. I, I don't need no money. Well, yeah, yeah you Sometimes are Sometimes you can't even let some people know that you have a savings account. No. Because in his, if you say, I'm putting money in a savings account, yeah. in his head, Oh, we got some money sitting inside. Yeah. So if I do get this, how's it going to really hurt me? Because I know my baby well, got some money I know I could run side. through this because she got something on the side. Yep. No, he don't know. He just don't know. His money, his name is on it, but he don't know. <laughs> no. You know. Don't need to know. They got to build in a few little safety situations for us because, no, you don't want to be slipping out there financially. <laughs> no, you don't. That's for certain. And neither does he. No. If you know she go out there, if she goes by any designer store, she allowed to put something up on sale. No, excuse me. It's like it was a clearance. It was a sale. Every so every week they got a clearance in the sale. Well, you know, they, they send me an email. Of course they're gonna send you an email because you go out there every week, you're gonna get a damn email. It's for something to go on sale, something, you know, come today for this, that, for 20% off here and 40%. Off. Baby, you got more than enough purses. Mm -hmm. You uh, unless, like I said, unless you're gonna sell some of them other thousand purses you got, come on now. That's enough. Yeah. yeah, come on, enough's yeah. enough. Yeah, you have to be willing to have those hard, uncomfortable conversations. Oh, God, bottom yeah. line, you have to, and early, early, early rather than later, right? Because, because oh, you've God. allowed something to fester, and at first it was just like a hmm. When you first kind of noticed it, mm -hmm. if you let it fester, it's you mad, mad. Yes, you are. Why would you wait until you're super mad to approach something with someone that you quote unquote love? You know why? Because some people will say, maybe may, may she'll do better. Now, mind you, they didn't say nothing to you, but they said, well, maybe she'll she'll notice what she's doing, and maybe you know she'll make that change. It's like as a crackhead, you know, may, maybe you know he or he or she is. Oh, give him crack. the room to self correct. Yeah, maybe they realize they're going well, in nah, there. I'm your helpmate. Nah, I'm helping. <laughs> I'm helping. 
I'm helping. <laughs> yeah, you would, you would think so. Yeah. You have to. Because I was told to. I was you, told to. That's my job. That's my role is yes. to help. Yes. So you think that you're just going to la die off? No, no. I'm mentioning it to you. <laughs> I'm not going to come at you like you're a child. No. You know, but I'm going to raise it to your attention. I can't correct it for you. No. I'll bring it to your attention. And you said some very a good point. Children, do not treat your mates as kids. Now that, see, that's one that's hard because I'm going to assume the woman doesn't want to treat her man like a kid. I don't think it happens overnight. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the one thing that we have to be honest with, mm -hmm. right? It's like a woman who's nagging. I don't think she started nagging overnight. These mm -hmm. are progressive actions and behaviors that I, I, it just has to be. I just assume is occurring. I, I thought so too. You wouldn't, you wouldn't walk up to a young lady or start to speak intimately with the young lady that you knew from school or you knew from work or you knew from anywhere and you felt like she spoke to you like you was her son. True. Right? It's very true. You wouldn't take her out. You wouldn't whine and dine her. You wouldn't lay down. You wouldn't cuddle up with her. You wouldn't be on no Netflix and chill. Nothing. No. With the woman who belittles you and makes you feel like a child when something hits the fan. Yes. I, I would think that. Damn. Because if that's the case, what sense of self do you have? Mm-hmm. But also, what sense of self about the woman? Because the woman wouldn't sign up in the beginning for a man who she felt like she had to speak to him like he was a child. Mm -hmm. Learn behavior. Learn behavior. Oh, oh, we're yeah. being told that this some is how she's raised. She's looking for that same type of person to be her mate that she can control. Oh, that's a super broken. That's oh, a that's yes, a that's, that's a shattered. woman who's looking for who's intentionally looking for a beta male. Mm -hmm. What oh. I'm referencing is in most situations though that thing broke down mm -hmm. that's yep. a respect that had been broken down yes yes definitely without question yeah to be. i mean there's no if you're a woman who basically you're trying to say i'm going to make the man i want I, I don't i'm basically i gotta i gotta start a kid so i'm just going to add to this man and make him what i want him to be so really you don't want to make you want somebody that you can make and show the world, I took this clay and I made this masterpiece from this clay. You didn't even, you didn't even care what the what the dude was. Just kind of like, if I if you allow me to you had a man? Well, it ain't a man. That, that's a level one. Ish, yeah. a man thing. Yeah, a man a thing. Male. Because a real man wouldn't allow it to happen. Mm -mm. First, you're looking at her crazy. Are, are you trying to make me over to something? And if she, if she start to, oh, well, you know, Okay, listen, listen, let me tell you. You're not going to tell me what to do. I know what I need to do. I know I need to handle my business, and right. I know who I am. Right. So if you do not accept what you see, then we shouldn't be together. Because I'm not going to accept it. Because you start telling me how to do me, I might have a problem. Just like you would have a problem if I tell you what you need to do to do you. Because then you'd be like, oh, you ain't my kid. I ain't, I ain't your, your kid. We're going to have a problem there. But if a, if a <laughs> level one guy allow that to happen, mm -hmm. then you're surprised. I can't believe he's level one. I thought he was level three. No, you, no, 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 lady. You knew he was level one. And and again, then a lot of women make the mistake where they take a level one dude and they spend all the time and effort and everything to, to build him to maybe level two, beginning level two. And then he leaves. That's what I was, gonna, that was where I was going with that. Well, he should leave. But no, he leaves her. He leaves her. He's supposed to leave her. But she don't expect that because exactly. she's like, I need, I'm building him for me. Not for nobody else. No, because what ends up happening is that he leveled up by himself. See, the part, the job, again, is to, for both of us to engage in a journey alongside of each other. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, when you're pouring your everything into a man in order to help him to level up, you've put yourself on pause. Mm -hmm. So you're not leveling up alongside of him. Mm -hmm. So now he has... Why would a level two? Why would any players on level two want to play with any players on level one? It doesn't make sense. 
So the problem is the fact that you thought that you was going to pour your everything into him Mm -hmm. and thought that you was going to allow him to get up on your shoulders Mm -hmm. and get you, you there. Can you get it? You try to get him to level two, right? Mm -hmm. And you down on level one Mm -hmm. and you thought he was supposed to like throw down (laughs) and pull you you with him. That because again, we grow alongside of each other. We show up equally yoked, right? Equally Equally yoked, bringing 100% to the table, Mm -hmm. not 50 50, 100 100. Yep. Right? And then we go through the life journey together, both trying to progress, both trying to bring bring our best self to the table, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because why would a man who's out here doing big things, doing great things, overcoming things, making mm-hmm. sacrifices, becoming more and more disciplined, want to be involved with someone who lacks discipline. Because again, you know, you sent him through school. You mm-hmm. sent him through job career training, right? You made yep. sure he attained the skills along the way. Mm-hmm. Did you attain those skills along the way? No. So now when he goes to present in front of a certain group of people, he looks polished. Yes, he, he presents does. very well. Yep. When you go to present in front of those same group of people, mm. you don't look polished. You no. don't look well. Nope. Y'all are on two different f- playing fields. Yes. How long can he keep you and present you to his new group, his new level of people? That's very true. And you've done all that to get him there. And yeah. you think, oh, he's going to pull me up with him. No. No. Or better yet, he gets, he looks at number two. He said, "Oh, she's a whole new world. He he's never seen before." So and now it is. He, don't, he don't turn around. No, because he he's like, "I ain't going back to that. I'm, I'm here now." No. It's it's the very idea of if you could do this for me, why didn't you do this for you? Because he didn't have to turn around. No, because you, as the woman, you wanted a particular guy. You mm-hmm. wanted control. The guy. Oh, you want it control, control with it. Yes. With this type of yes, guy. Yes, you want it Which control does it. speak to your issue, right? You yep. don't want to level up. You And technically, you don't even want a level two type of man. You just want a man who you can't control. At your level, which could be a level one. You at think, any level. At, you, you want a guy, you want guy who's like, you want the assets or resources of a guy who makes his own decisions, but you want to make the decisions for him. There you go. That's exactly what you want. And you're going to think that's going to work out for you? It's all millions of women who's, who thought that way in the past mm-hmm. and currently and, and in the future that's going to learn the hard lesson. Because when you start to do all that and want to control him, you know, he gets out there. It's like a dog. You keep him locked in the back, and he just run around the back. And then one day, he see that split in the fence. He's like, hmm. Pew, he threw yeah. that. Because he's tired of running around in the yard. Because you control everything. Now he's in the neighborhood. He's like, oh, man. It's like of- this out here? What? I ain't coming back. So now you're surprised that, where the dog at? Dog gone. Dog gone. And now you, man, I don't spend all my good time trying to trying to mold him, control him, make him what I want to be. Now some other bitch and took him and made him, and now he married her, made her right. Now you just gruntled. Now you're mad. Yep. Now you teed off. Now you threw him in. He's another one you threw in the bag. So you can go around and tell everybody, all the guys you'd have made who have let you down and made you feel bad. Because you didn't do this, not your first time doing it. Oh, no. I told you it's a bag. It's a bag of dudes you mm-hmm. did that too. But every time you think, no, this, this guy's different. No, it's not this different. You're broken mm-hmm. and maybe shattered. And you keep doing the same thing and, over and over and, and over, over again. And over again. And if you find a guy who's weak enough to say, I'm going to marry you, even though he may not even like you. Mm-hmm. But he's going to go for the flow because he knows she's going to pay for this. Mm-hmm. She's going to keep these clothes on me. She is constantly attracts the opportunistic man. Yes. Right? Most of the men are going to get their come up via this woman who's allowing this. No doubt. Right? No doubt. Yes. And you have you technically have no reason to allow it. You're allowing it because somebody is spending some time. There's probably not even an appropriate amount of time. Nope. And some bit of attention on you. Some. It's probably not even an appropriate amount of attention on you. No. Um and you're you you give them so much, you pour so much into someone who pours nothing into you. Mm. A man who has nothing to pour zero is a foolish man. What they say, um 
broke guys don't deserve no yeah, I know that's <laughs> right. It's actually the foolish man who doesn't deserve any. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Because what he gonna give you in return? You may end up with a, with an STD. I mean, <laughs> and that puts you in the negative. Uh, yes, yes, it will. But the thing is, you know this. So you the, know this. I, my thing is, how do you are women that desperate to say I got somebody that I'm willing to grab anything off the street? Just to say that I have it. I don't. Grab anything off the street? Mm. I just think people grab what's closest to them. No, I think that you start off with a facade. I think even the poorest, brokest, broke down man is going to present himself a certain type of way in the beginning. Oh, he right? has to. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, you're desperate, but... You were lied to a little bit in the beginning, and you you knew better, mm-hmm. but you ha- you needed that lie first. Mm-hmm. So there's absolutely, um, I I believe a bit a great bit of, de- of deceit but going that's what on. Made it you had this conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I think it's more than just the woman's desperation. It's also the deceit that goes on in the game. It's like, oh shoot, technically he could be a catch. So I'm going to call him the night. I'm going to call him the night. Because he could be the one. Yep. He could be yep. the one. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and, and it's kind of like then you – but the the disconnect I have is you may – we start off with that game. Mm-hmm. Um, a, the, the deceit and the lying and everything else along with it. But how do you go from dating a guy like that to actually marrying a guy like that? I mean, do you know how far you got to go from saying that he's possibly a catch, he possibly is this, but you know he's broken off? When you've, along the way between dating and, you, and you marriage. You did too much. You gave up too much. That's what and people. That stuck. F- and that, No, you're not stuck. You think you're stuck. But, you, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you think you're stuck. You done stuck you're yourself. Here. Like, what are you doing? Because y'all been. It, First, it's always the time, right? Mm, People love oh, to talk yep. about I've how been I've been, years. I've been, we've been together for five, we've been together for twelve years. Y'all been miserable for eleven. <laughs> That's talk true. Talk to me about being together for twelve years and you've been miserable for eleven. We've been together for twenty years. Y'all have been not seeing eye to eye for fifteen. But T, think about this. You're saying I've been with him for for ten, fifteen years. So from one. The 14. Not one time during that time did y'all plan on getting married. Oh, no. Y'all did plan on getting married at some point. Always and talk about Always it. talked about it. Somebody yeah, flaked. Yeah. It, when we went to go look at the stuff, it cost too much. Um, somebody cheated. Yeah. Oh. We was going to, we tried to buy a house instead of getting, like, we're going to have all these reasons why. It just didn't go down, but ultimately it never quite makes sense. But, yeah, you have time is the number one reason why people claim that they're going to stay together. Then it's the living – today's people Mm -hmm. is going to be the living situation, right? Because you can't necessarily afford to move out right now. So we can't – Afford to break up. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> I can't afford because I can't live on my just own. Just even in one hundred, you see, you see married couples even in those situations. So it definitely even affects the those who are just dating because we again, you gave so much of yourself. You mm-hmm. moved in with somebody who you weren't married to. You gave too much of yourself without getting enough back. You should know you're gonna lose every time. The one thing about women, mm-hmm. women definitely suffers ultimately from that decision because you're giving up good years, good GPYs. We had that discussion. Yes. And in the end, you're older. You, you're giving up all this stuff to him. And then he says after 15 years, I don't think it's going to work. By the same token, you're also screwed the because yeah, yeah, you're screwed because all right, if you're from 21, yeah, yeah, girl, yeah. cause you get together at 21, right? Mm-hmm. Boom. Y'all now, not seeing eye to eye, y'all thinking about breaking up, you 40. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're 40 mm-hmm. now. I guarantee you, if you've been together from 21 to 40, y'all have at least a kid. Yeah, oh, y'all at it. least guarantee. one child. If y'all would have been split up. Yep. If there was no kid involved, y'all would have 
been sped up. Because there was no kid involved. Yep. You would have been gone. Yep, there you go. There there's you go. something there's something that had kept you there for 19 years. Yep. Yeah. What, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, there's no way. Yeah, there's, there's no way that, that you would have stayed there. But now, like you said, from 21 to 40. Now, that's, that's your prime years. That's yeah. all your years. He said you're <laughs> dead now. Come on, like The producer you. said that's all your good years. So now, really, to be honest, as forty, as a as a male, as a man, we still good. You still good. We, in yeah. fact, we good until we good good until we die, and that could be in our sixties and seventies. We still good. So we y'all still. at the top of the barrel. Well, I didn't dwindle way down oh, here. You, you dwindled with the kid. Forty yep. years. Yep. Mm-hmm. A few little crow's feet. Yep. That's not right, man. <laughs> Damn. You're going to want to say, let me go out into the dating market. And now you don't know how to. Yeah. Because you've you, been you, on the shelf. You've been on the Wait, shelf. And not any shelf. Mm. This is the other problem, right? You've not been on any shelf. Mm. See, most of these guys, they want to play on uh, the middle shelf, a little below, right? <laughs> Bitch, I'm top shelf. Yes. You've been up. You've been right here. And you, now you know, all of a sudden dwindled. To bottom of the barrel, you don't even know how to operate here. You don't even know how to operate in this <laughs> nope. capacity at all. And you know what has happened to you now? You was Louis the Thirteenth on the top. Yep. He's been sipping and sipping and sipping yep. for for nineteen years. Yep. Now you're empty. Yep. So now he ain't gonna spend another eight thousand dollars to, to <laughs> put you back up top. He, he he can't he can't put you back on no, top. Can't because guess it. what happens if you're my top shelf liquor? When I empty you, you're gone. Yep. That's just it. That's it. You can't, re- if you put another Louis the 13th up there, it's not going to be the same exact bottle that you had 21 years ago. Oh, it's not going to be the same bottle that you had up there for 19 years. Nope. It's going to have to be a brand new bottle. Wow. And if I keep that bottle that I had up there for 20 some years, I'm not putting Louis the 13th. I'm putting regular look in there. It's going to look like it's <laughs> Louis the 13th. It. But now I'm just going to, and, and you know what? I'm going to put it up there, but it's well, not going to be up there empty. Yep. Or you could be just that. Oh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sticking it up there. You're but now there. you're now Louis XIII empty. Mm-hmm. And then you say, I'm worth something. And you are. Mm-hmm. No woman is not worth anything. You are worth something. But you have spent your time. You're on the clearance rack. <laughs> oh, yep. You're on the clearance rack. So you're now. Saying, right? Yes. Because mm-hmm. then you got a kid. You ne- if he died, you couldn't even get benefits for him, any alum, nothing for him, because you never got married. You ain't got no life insurance with him. The kid would get something because, again, that's his kid. Yeah, it's but you, naturally, but you, yeah, no. Nothing. And, and now you're then trying to get out in the field, 40 years old, little crow's feet, and now got a kid. And you know what? You're not the hot chick anymore. You're milk. Yeah. If you're lucky. If you're lucky to be a male. If you're lucky. If you didn't keep yourself mm-hmm. tight. That's mm-hmm. the other thing. You get comfortable, and, and things happen. Like, oh, you know what? He... He wants me. He loves me all my roles and stuff. And it's guys that love women that way. Yeah. But you get out in the dating world, it's a different yeah, world. It's competition. Big competition. And it's this. Yes. Yes. And what we say? Yes. They, they doing it for things. So the, the competition, oh, baby. No, I'm oh. trying to get my rent paid. There nah. you go. She done came all the way correct. And they getting that BBL. They in the gym. Mm-hmm. They doing all that stuff. And they're 40. Mm-hmm. But you 40 with a kid and mm-hmm. you settled because... You thought this guy's going to do right. Yep. He's got to do right by me. He gave, he gave me a kid. We've been together for 19 years. He's got to do right by me. Until he realized that I'm 40 years old and I can do better. Yep. And since you didn't commit to me, then I used all your milk up, most of your milk up, and now I'm going to move on. And now you're going to keep that anger, that hate in your heart because that's he did really you wrong. And that's not it. You did yourself wrong. Yeah. You allowed yourself yeah. to be. You missed uh, the requirement. All of it. Yeah, you told him that you required this of him, but you didn't hold him accountable when he didn't deliver, which I think for a lot of women, we we don't know what to do sometimes when we make a requirement, you miss the requirement, we end too deep. Now what do we do? You have what's to cut your losses. Next step? To me, again, you have to cut your losses because you know, you know what's going to happen. But I love him. I love him. Yeah, but obviously he don't love you. <laughs> he don't love you that much. He ain't love you enough to just go ahead and say, he used all excuses. I ain't got enough money for the ring. Yeah. Uh, yeah or you ain't money. got enough money for my birthday. Or you don't got enough money for my anniversary. Or you don't got enough money for, you know, the day that we made up together. Or you forgot. Or you yeah. forgot. Yes. And, and, and see, 
How many times you done forgot our special date? It's not How many special times? no more. No. It's not yeah. special to him anymore. Uh-uh. It's, he, doesn't, he doesn't care. Because you, all I got to do is tell you enough to keep you quiet. Yep. And if you don't have enough intestinal fortitude to say, hey, I'm, I'm done. I, and, and do it early. Not 40. Don't wait till you're 40. You do that like, okay, we've been together for five years and we look like we're just playing house. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play house. I, I want to get married within a year. Mm-hmm. And that, I don't care about no huge marriage. We can go to the justice of the peace, pick any date, walk in there, and just get married. Mm-hmm. You can give me a bubblegum ring for all I care because it's all it's all a symbol anyway. But to make me comfortable and to make me know that I'm part of your unit, then we need to do this. And if he's fighting you on, well, you know, I don't really know you. My, my, it's my, what you taught me, you don't know me. You've been with me for five years. We, we live in, we're in the same house together. We pay bills. You sleep in the same bed. You know how I look in the morning. I know how you look in the morning. What more you need to know? Yeah. And if he's got cold feet, he ain't ever going to marry you. He's going to make an excuse not to marry you. Ooh. Never going to marry you. If he's got cold feet, he'll never do it. Never Dang. do it. Because of his, let me tell you, for us, mm-hmm. we know, probably not when it first, because in first, like I said, it's the whole you look good kind of thing. As I get to know you, you all either fall into, eh, it's a good ride, I'm going to ride it, but I ain't going to marry it, to, hmm, I think I like her. She has great qualities. You know, she like she could be a good mother, mm-hmm. somebody who got my back, and then you start playing accordingly. But you dictate that because if you allow him to just kind of like, oh, I could do anything. Mm-hmm. Now he's like, okay, well, why am I going to put that much effort in it? But if you don't say, hey, I'm not in here just to play. I'm in here to do some things, and I feel that we're here. Now, you can say, hey, I feel we're heading here. Now, if I'm wrong, let me know. Then that way I can just rev back my emotions and start to look somewhere else because I'm going to have to do that. You have to rev it back anyway if he's not the guy. But you don't keep investing all your time and your money and everything into that. Do and you expect ask to be- the guy what his intentions are, though? I would think at some point you wouldn't keep sitting right. I mean, I think, okay, ask him, but then, like, if somebody's showing you something, you better believe that. Because a man's it. not going to tell you his ill intentions with you. Like, what no. man is going to say, no, nah, I'm just riding this wave until the wheels fall off. <laughs> no, Tomorrow, they're not. We just doing what we doing. And, you know, if you get tired of me, then... Yeah, you know, deuces. Okay, I'm all right. What what man's gonna say that straight he's up? Not, he's not. And again, it, the moment you start playing house is the moment you set yourself up for failure. Because when you move into his house and you move in together, because ultimately, what are you doing? You know, on Judge Judy, I don't know, fifty years she's been on TV. How many times she said, "I hate for people to come in here and want to separate things when you didn't go." To the justice of the peace or have a marriage, get married. <laughs> Judge and Judy have... better do her damn <laughs> job and separate that TV from that Xbox, that couch, and that bed and stop playing. See, you she... know them people ain't getting married. And, and, and that's then... why they ain't on Judge Lynn Toller's show. See, and they went to Judge Judy. They ain't on girl. divorce court. Nope. Yeah. Because they were playing. They've been you playing. playing house. <laughs> <laughs> you play in house, and now she said, now I have to separate you like you've been married. But well, I, I bought the TV. I bought this. Mm-hmm. She said, if you got married, it'd be in, it'd be in divorce court, and you'd be able to sell all that. But it now would, y'all want to now. Y'all in small claims court now. Mm-hmm. Fighting for, I want yeah. the TV. I bought the TV. I, I use my tax money to buy the TV. <laughs> it's all tax. It's always tax money or some extra <laughs> money I got to buy the TV. And again, it's like, and then she's like, I'm hurt because now that's his new girlfriend beside well, how long y'all been together? I've been with him for two years. How long you been with her? 20. She said, you're a fool. He didn't marry her in 20. Why do you think she's going to... I'm different. You know, you're, not, you're, just a, you're just a new a new victim. Well, somebody else to ride out the wave with, apparently. Yes. this guy's just riding waves. And mm-hmm. you allow him to ride your wave. You yeah. allow him to use all your resources. Because you basically just open up the, the box and just say, here you go, take what you want. And you don't have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And then in the end, he said, oh, you got very little left in your cabinet, so I don't want your cabinet no more. Yeah. I'm going to go find me another cabinet that's fully stocked. Because men like women who's fully stocked with stuff to give. And that goes back to now you were with this dude for X number of years, and now you get in the dating scene. You go out there, and you say, hey, I'm 40. I only got one kid. And you open up your drawer, and you're like, There's nothing damn, there. there ain't nothing there. Mm-hmm. So now he's like, no. And we know. That means you were with somebody 
or somebody's for a period of time, and then you're out here exposed. Yeah. You, you get all your goodies. Yeah. All your stuff, all your good stuff, all your intangibles, tangibles. And now you're like, here, it's like, want me for me. <sighs> you can't, women can't make men feel bad because you made bad decisions, bad choices, and now you expect me to just say, look at what I got left. Look at what's left. Please love me for who I am and what I got left and accept me. And all my guys said, no. Do you know this probably somebody 40 years old that's well stocked because they may not have no kids. May, they may not even been in relationships, but you're just 40 years old and things didn't work out. I want her. But unless, you know, I want kids, but then I know I got to get somebody who's probably not 40 because you get a little dangerous when you, ha- you want to have a kid, you know, depending on the guy's situation. I mean, situation. yeah. Now you can move because they're a man. You can move around the age range. We can right? go back and forth. And again, when you're top level, well, level three men are usually taken. Mm-hmm. Level three are gone. They Yeah, because if they're not, if they're playing in level three round, they're probably not actually level three men anymore because they're gone. They're yeah. gone. Mm-hmm. Level three men are basically maintaining, making sure that they're good, making sure that their unit is good, and everybody around them is good because level three support level three because we know it, the work it took to get here. Mm-hmm. So we're going to, we're, we're taking. Mm-hmm. You're dealing with level two and level one men now. Level three, pretty much, unless somebody died or something, then you may have an opening because one of the spouses died. Then you can say, oh, I can go up. But you know he's level three. Yeah. And you know he ain't going for nothing less than. So, you know, and, and since we talk about the marriages and all that stuff, my biggest key to everybody from, from my 26 years of marriage is you have to understand that you're always going to have good days and bad days. But you have to talk about it. You have to talk about it. You can't let it just fester. And you can't let one particular argument carry over to the next day because that one argument is that one seed of doubt starts to rear its ugly head and you end up in a situation that could have been avoided if you just had a conversation. Absolutely. So, you know, that, that's what I tell people. Just talk about it and really get out of still this lingering one. It's just crazy. I think my bit of advice would be stay consistent with what you do mm-hmm. no matter what your feelings are. Yes. You can be angry, sad, whatever, however you're feeling, do what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. If you cook for that man and he done pissed you off, made you upset, mm-hmm. still cook. Yes. Right? Yes. Whatever it is that you do on a normal day, mm-hmm. don't let anger or something that he's done or she's done Mm -hmm. stop you from still serving in that marriage right exactly you can't get mad at her and then i'm gonna pay the bill late no you only pay your bills on time so continue because whatever's happened right now that has moved us emotionally Mm -hmm. is so temporary yes but the way that we pour into each other Mm mm-hmm that's going to always be, that should always be the same. I'm not, I'm the hairstylist. I'm not going to be mad at my spouse and then I don't, I'm not doing your hair. No, no, please, come on. I'm going to put my attitude on pause, tend to your little scalp. It might hurt a little bit more, but I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> just because, you know, when your mood shift just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, don't stop cooking. Don't stop having sex. Don't stop ironing each other's clothes Mm -hmm. don't stop taking out each other's food for lunch type of thing just because you mad or angry or uncomfortable exactly stay consistent you know what and that is perfect i mean you learn nothing else people listen to what we said those two things and with that we're going to end today's session i find it as a session it (laughs) seems like it's just like we just putting stuff out there for everybody but this is all important things and like i said just, just be consistent and, and make sure that you take care of each other. With that, that's the end of today's session of On The Mic with the M. And T. And you can reach me on and over to become on IG. T, how do they reach you? At trust underscore city on Instagram. Cool. Hit that like and subscribe to the channel. Holler at y'all peeps later. <laughs>